In 1940, the once self-proclaimed greatest author in the world turned down the Pulitzer Prize for drama. One of Bill's quotes on his refusal uh, had to do with, uh, um, you know, he said, art must be democratic, but at the same time, it must be both proud and aloof. It must not be taken in by either praise or criticism. Wealth, I am sure, cannot patronize art. And the strange impulse of wealth to seek to do so is, I believe, a curious example of noble bad taste. This was William Saroyan, a man that elicits nostalgia and honor to the best city in California. When most people think of California, they think of Hollywood, famous actors, and a glamorous beach life. But from the Californian town that sells peaches, almonds, and oranges, the son of an Armenian immigrant would later become a world-famous, award-winning author. Saroyan was born in the middle of the Central Valley, a long way from Hollywood in all its glory, right in the middle of Fresno, California. When he was 15, Saroyan dropped out of Fresno Technical High School because he was tired of being discriminated against for being the son of an Armenian immigrant. Saroyan did, however, keep learning and reading at the Carnegie Library in Fresno. Years later, the high school dropout published The Young Man on the Flying Trapeze, a story about a young Armenian man facing economic problems in Fresno. The story was meant to portray himself and was drawn from Saroyan's personal experiences. His book got attention from a large group of readers, but more importantly, it brought worldwide attention to some of the problems the Armenians in Fresno were facing. In addition to educating its readers, the book also put Fresno on the map. Fresno was now a notable place. It was a place that someone had found interesting enough to write a book about. I think the most important thing that he himself said it, it says, I did not make Fresno famous, Raisins did it. However, when you look at the literary world and you compare William Stroyan, he was the one who put the Fresno on the map of the world. When you travel in various parts of the country or the world, especially in Europe or Far East, when they ask you where you're from, when you say Fresno, the first thing that comes to their mind is, ah, Saroyan. Fresno and Saroyan are interlinked and they do relate to each other. Fresno was the only place Saroyan was ever said to have felt a strong connection to. He liked the connection he had developed between himself and California, which was later used as a reference for many of his books. Saroyan also once wrote that Fresno helped him accept and become the person he was because of the environment and the people that live here. The local people of Fresno knew Saroyan not only as a Pulitzer Prize winning author, but he was their Pulitzer Prize winning author. The interesting part is that uh, when you read him, you will read part of Fresno's history. Not necessarily an Armenian history, but American history. He has written about friends that obviously as he grew up, he had a lot of Armenian friends, but they were all born and raised in Fresno. So it is part of the Fresno's uh, flavor. He wrote stories and sketches about the people and places he visited in the district and created a sense of community in it. Years later, the William Saroyan Theater was named after him. Well, I think they probably named the William Saroyan Theater after William Saroyan because, you know, he was a playwright and he also, because of the large Armenian population in Fresno, was kind of looked on as a uh, hero figure. And so it was probably a fitting tribute. 2008 marked the 100th birthday of Saroyan. In celebration, Fresno hosted a year-long event to not only promote Saroyan to Fresno, but to the whole world. Saroyan once claimed that the 10 years he spent in Fresno were the 10 most important years of his life. 
from this agricultural town, Saroyan found the inspiration to write his books that would later earn him the title he claimed of the world's greatest writer.